Chadwick Model Railway with trains running in both directions? Surely Charlie hasn't connected it all up. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. And in this video, we continue with the layout build. Now, during the last build video, I completed this helix and it's all wired up and appears to function well, although it's not connected to the main layout at the top, only at the bottom. Now, if we run across the room to where it will join up, it would join up on this board over here that I call the river board. But the river board isn't without its own problems because I've made a bit of a, what should we say, mistake. You see, these two tracks originally went straight on part of a, of a tail chasing layout and these tracks came around here into a goods yard area and hopefully looking at this diagram they kind of make sense if you look over to the left hand side. So what was it all about? Well these two tracks went straight on and it all went into a big tail chaser but the problem was is my knees couldn't take it working as what we call a duck under layout because you just duck under the baseboards to get on the inside and my knees became pretty shot with it so I scrubbed around the whole idea and went for the the helix setup you see today but what does that mean that's going on here well these are two left-hand electro frog medium radius points and this is a diamond crossover and what I actually need here now is one long electro frog left hand point and a single slip so I need to remove um, these three components fit a um, a long point here and I can use the same uh, point point motor position there get rid of this and pop in a single slip now if you look underneath here you can see the uh, four tortoise point motors and also the lump in the middle is a DS64 from Digitrax which controls them so all I have to do is remove tortoise point number 42 and the corresponding point which it switches and then of course fit the long left hand point and the double slip and of course the two point motors that will operate the double slip not an easy task because in my efforts to crack on with the build as it were I installed installed board 9. Now if I'd used a bit of common sense and checked Lee's track plan properly I would have realized that I need to change those points that are up there because now I put board 9 in I can barely get to those point motors so this means covering this in blankets and a board and going in here um, with my back on here to work upside down on those point motors. It's not the end of the world I've done it before it's just a little bit of um uncomfortable let's say there we are so once I've changed those what else do we have to do well clearly we need to connect the end of the helix as you can see with that block of wood to stop any runaways and we need to connect the helix up um, all the way across the top of this area to another board that will go in this corner but the problem with that is of course is that large bookcase that you can see the back of here and as you can see that bookcase is quite substantial so once I've moved that bookcase out of the way and relocated in this room somewhere where heaven knows then we've got to build this board here um, that runs down onto there and it's just a matter of then connecting up this board to the, uh, the helix which actually runs uphill because it comes out of a tunnel so that's the guts of what I've got to do so no time like the present, let's crack on and do it. No, I can't deny it. No, I can't deny it that after an hour, an hour and a half under here, it does get a little tedious. But I think I'm done. The point motors are in. 
I've just got to connect them up to a panel, but the panel will probably be on the next board. So I shall remove myself from here in some ungentlemanly manner. Well, the new long uh, left-hand point is in, and so is the double, uh, sorry, the single slip. Um, this isn't without risk because I've used this single slip uh, previously in another location, but I feel confident that it's okay. Um, it's still good to go. Um, if anything should go wrong with it, it's reasonably accessible here, so I could pull it and replace it. But I mean, these things are getting on the region of £40 a pop, so um, it's nothing to sort of uh, throw away and go and buy a new one. If you're not into single slips and double slips, a quick explanation. It works as a crossing, so you can go in either direction straight across, but a double slip, you can go from here through to here, and also from here through to here. Whereas a single slip, you can only do one of these arcs, and in this case, it's this one here. So you cannot run a train from here to here, because you would be running from the, the up line onto the down line. So it's a simple idea as that, and you've got um, a point motor there and a point motor there to switch these blades. This is an Insule Frog um, double slip, code 100 Pico, because you can't buy an Electro Frog one. But I feel confident that my wagons will all go through, my trains will all go through this. And it's wired from there to there, and it's just wired onto the general bus. It's isolated because I'm into block detection and all that blah, so um, don't get too worked up about any of that. Here's the two that I've taken up. Um, if you watch the channel regularly, you'll know that I use copy decks to secure my above, my sort of scenic areas rather than screw it. So it sort of uh, does away with some of the transmission from the um, nails or tacks or screws or whatever you might use into the baseboard. So now you only have to worry about the noise from the ballast when you do it. And here's the residue from the, um, the copy decks, as you can see. But they're both perfectly serviceable and they can use to get, be used again. Right, so let's just check it out and make sure that it works. So all I'm going to use to test it is an ordinary smoke alarm type battery. And we need to be looking at the point blades here. So if I put this on here, It's the other way around and hopefully you can see and hear the blades go across and if I reverse it they will go back. Great and I've tested both of these at uh, both of these switches and of course the one on the main point. So let's run a little loco and check out that everything works just fine. Well what better way to test it with a little 08 so we'll send this through and see how it gets on. The first thing is obviously the frog on the point, because it's an electro frog point, to make sure the frog's the right way around, uh, wired the right way around, otherwise it would short out about now. And we're good. And then into the single slip. No problem at all. Okay, right, let's put this away and move on. Now joking aside, now joking aside, laying under there was no pleasurable experience. I laid a blanket, then I put a piece of plywood down, then another blanket and a couple of pillows and got in there. But it was absolutely excruciatingly uncomfortable, let's say. But it's just an example of bad planning because I had never planned on having a fiddle yard underneath. It was all going to be at this level. And of course, then the limitations of having it all in, the, in one level, it was just awful. And hence I moved on. But you can see the trouble you can get into if you don't plan properly. Moving on, it's time to build board 21. <laughs> Couldn't make it up, could you? Build board 21, which goes in here. If you haven't seen this before, this is AnyRail and it's only available for PC. Fruit-based computer systems um, aren't compatible with it. Now if I zoom into this track plan provided by Lee, my extremely valuable track planner, um, this is the, the, uh, the, right the left-hand point and the single slip that I've just installed on top of the riverboard. 
So now this is the item in question. This is board 21. This is where we go from here. And we need to connect up board 21 to the top of the helix. And that is where we are with the top of the helix. So this construction here within these dotted lines needs to be built. Now to build them first, like I say, I think I'll, think I'll build board 21 first and get that sorted out. Um, but what I do have to do before I can get in there, once now I've measured it, is I need to get rid of this um, bookshelf, which is horrendous. So I'll move that across to the other side of the studio and hopefully all will be well. Right, time to start cutting timber. I've more or less finished the construction of this board but I thought I'd just mention what I've made it of. It's made from um, 12 millimeter ply straight out of sort of B&Q which is block and quail if you didn't know that and the support timber is plain smooth timber and it's 18 mil uh, thick as it were 44 mil um, deep and it comes in 2.4 meter lengths. And that's all I've done is used ordinary wood screws, countersunk them into the um, plywood. Now in accordance with the cunning track plan, um, this area here where these tracks come through on, the, on their way to the helix needs to drop down a quarter of an inch. So I sort of thought long and hard about this and came up with a cunning solution. And this was the idea is all I've done is the same sort of piece of timber but I've used a jigsaw and cut out a quarter of an inch groove in here so when it comes back to the board all I need to do is put it in place like this and then screw this down and that will hold it in place. Um, I can always pop a bit of glue in there but that should give me the required drop on this board and then we move on to the next ones. You can obviously see the track starting to take shape it was just to figure out how the track would lay across. Now of course it's always awkward working on your own and putting in baseboards so what I've done is I've installed these little brackets as you can see here um, and then my, the baseboard will simply slot behind it and hold it still while I'm faffing around. So if I now offer up the baseboard and I have a sort of a pre-measured leg for it to rest upon <coughs> then hopefully the support timbers what well, support timber would drop behind those boards and then this one here will support this side it's pretty much the right length and I'll just pop another support on the other side now we're temporarily sort of in the right place. So here's the gap I have to bridge and it's round about 71 inches wide or in new money 180 centimetres going from the uh, edge of the new board where you can see I've taken down the, the start of the incline over to the last board on the helix. Now I must confess I have spent some time trying to sort this one out and I have a cunning plan. So my idea is to use this old offcut of 9mm ply to bridge between the two but I've inserted or drilled in a new piece of um, M8 rod and using the bits and bobs from DCC train automation excuse the noise made another platform and with a piece of the ply of the standard helix I've added a piece of foam sort of uh, sorry foam cork track bed to take it up to the same dimensions of this piece of ply so if I pop this into here have a little fiddle about there we are kind of good to go 
And then all I need to do is once this is in place and bolted down is then bridge from here across to the new board with this board. Now I had thought whether to go down the same avenue as the um, board that goes up to the branch line station as having an open sort of frame construction with bits of timber everywhere. But thinking about it, what I'm going to try and do is use the um, M8 uh, rod all the way across so you'll have sort of a few pairs of these rods as we bring along a sort of like a, a plinth or a, um, you know a, a, what we've got like a flyover if you like of this this track so that is what I shall try now this first section of plywood is held in place exactly the same way as when I built the helix with some good old gorilla wood glue and then just slip it into place with a few clamps always remembering of course to keep an eye on your levels. I've got to be perfectly honest, I'm no woodworker. However, I'm just as qualified as you are about turning plywood into sawdust and scrap. But you've really just got to give it a go and hope you've got yourself um, a jigsaw, which is my sort of main weapon of warfare here. And so I've, I've just got to trim the edge here to fit in with this section. And I've put on a little block here for this to rest on so hopefully we should have a better idea then once it's in place of how much of this we need to kind of cut away which is hard to guess really because you, you obviously can't see underneath but it's I'm sort of guessing that it will be this sort of centre section will need to be cut away but of course I will need to leave room for a couple of supports um, to come up from underneath which of course it's very difficult to judge because you can't see through the board but I imagine it's sort of like this so what I'll do is give it my best guess and uh, start trimming this off and see how we get on this is an off cut so it doesn't really matter if I sort of screw it up but I haven't got another piece to replace it really, which is a, a bit of a shame. Anyway, we'll crack on. And so sometimes in your life it's just a case of best guess really, isn't it? And all that can really go wrong is I end up with four holes in the wrong place. So let's have a little go. And if I drop four rods through, we just hope they land a reasonable distance from the track. So, initial thoughts. Oh, not oh, that's a bit close, isn't it? Let's have a look. Yeah, a bit close up, wasn't it? Well, that one there is pretty um, unacceptable, really. But I think what we shall do is just redrill those two a little further away and see how that fits with the track plan. Let's have a look. Yeah, that'll be all right. Right, onward. 
Now thinking about what I've just, just done, some of it is probably unnecessary because I didn't have to use the sort of template guides at all. I mean, I could have put this one here and there and whatever. It really doesn't make any difference. These are only crucial in the helix design. But what did occur to me is if I get this piece of plywood and I screw it to the underside of this board, it will obviously add to its rigidity. So I shall drill the holes for these bolts into the base boards and secure them with nuts and washers. And they'll only come up a minimal distance here. There's no point in these coming up as, as high as possible. Um, there's no further use for them, so they'll just be sort of capped at this level. And then obviously on the underside, screw this to the, let's say the underside of the board and we'll take it from there and see how it sits. All of course with no glue, so I can always change my mind. Now you'd be right in thinking that winding these nuts all the way down this M8 bar is a pain, and it is. But this little beastie here is known as a swift nut, and there's a link in the show more tab. And if you lob it over, connect it to your drill, and then it just needs pinching up on the bottom. Beautiful. So this is the first of the trial fits. So obviously you can see the bars are in, they're not terribly tight. And here's that rigid piece. And this really is a lot better. So if we kind of offer this up and then thread through the, the bar, And you can see how it fits and it's a case now of sorting out the levels and tightening them down and obviously then laying the track but before we do that this really has to be trimmed now and you can see that coming through the center here will be the two tracks into there so you can see how much board is sort of wastage so I can take a couple of inches off both sides of this and we should be good to go. And then of course it's just making sure that they're level both horizontally as it were and of course you've got the, there's a constant incline going from back here right up to here and uh, it doesn't, doesn't look too bad to be perfectly honest. Then of course um, it's all got to come off because the track has to be laid on here with point motors and everything else but it's just a case now of getting these levels um, right and of course one of the last things to do now is to mark up and remove the excess board because it may well get in the way of the future boards which actually come round either side of this one. So I shall mark it out, take it outside, attack it with the jigsaw and we'll be done. Well, when I say we'll be done, we've then got to take this board out, <laughs> fit the track, fix the points, we'll mark up the, all the track everywhere first, of course, and then do the, the, the proper track fixing. Now, as you can see, things have moved on. Um, on this board here, I've laid the uh, five millimeter thick Woodland Scenics foam track bed. Um, apparently this, this area is always planned to be covered over but I wanted to lay this just in case we had a change of plan and on the run down to the helix I've used this the ordinary um, underfloor um, what do you call it underlay for clip lock floors the old wooden floors on this I don't recommend using this stuff it does damage rather easily um, but we are where we are um, the only piece of glue I've used is on the far end of that that first panel so everything here was kind of 
you know, we, I still can change it around should the levels prove not to be right, but everything seems good. I just need to bring these bolts up a little higher now because of, the, of these, this track bed. So where do I go from here? Well, let's talk about track. In accordance with the track plan, I had measured out exactly where these points were going to go, and then I marked it on the baseboard um, exactly the ends of the ball, at the ends of the, the, the points, so that when I laid the uh, foam track bed, you know, <laughs> I wasn't going to be lost of where this would go. So that's where that point goes, and it's the same for the other one. The track I'm going to use on the whole of this area will be the new Code 100 from DCC Concepts. I want to see how it trials, how it works out in time, because apparently you don't need to clean it as much. So that's what I shall use. So all I need to do now is to remove these boards and start laying track and the two point motors on this first board. Well, several days have now gone by with the other side of the weekend and I've laid all the track, all the infrastructure is in, all the foam track bed etc, all the wiring's done, all bar the switch on so we'll keep our fingers crossed. So what I actually done. Now coming off the helix here you can see the track change where we go from the Hornby third and fourth radius curves onto the DCC Concepts new flexible track. I've used the usual underlay and screwed the track down with the usual Phillips type screws because it's in a hidden area. The bridging piece has worked out very well and it's a lot stronger and more rigid than I originally had thought. As you go around onto that last board, as you can see, we then switch to the Woodland Scenics foam track bed and the tracks disappear off into the main layout. To go with my obsessive wiring, I popped a little terminal block underneath that uh, flyover piece just to put all the um, cables from the various blocks together before they drop down into the electronics on the board across there. Now there are a couple of things that I've chosen not to do and one of them is I have not powered up this piece of track here because should train controller decide to throw a wobbly let's say the last thing I need is a train coming down here and careering off the edge of this board and also the points themselves they're all wired up but not powered so again train controller can't change this point and make my train go trundling off into um, a non-existent area there's a new block here, this is blue 5, um, so you know the, the general block detection stuff is all there and as you can see there are none of these stainless steel screws here, this is all held down as you would by copy decks um, onto this foam track bed. So everything's wired up, um, I suppose I ought to run a couple of trains and see if it works. So if I now turn on track power, fingers crossed, power on, we should get some lights. Oh, and we do. A uh, little track tester. This is from Golden Valley Hobbies, by the way. Lovely piece of kit because it works on AC and DC and it gives you 5, 9 or 12 volts so you can see what's going on. Um, and yeah, we are apparently <laughs> good to go. Right, let's stick a loco on it and make sure everything works. Now I thought it fitting to use the very first sound loco that I ever bought. A little old class 25 from Backman. Well that all seems well, so I shall get another train and send it up the helix. Now whilst my Class 25 is beavering its way through the fiddle yard and heading towards the other helix, this western is coming up and naturally when you build a helix you always build the upline on the outside. So let's see if this works okay.
And yes, it does. <laughs> well, right up to that point, <laughs> it's set the wrong way. So it's now, of course, time to build confidence in the layout. And so I've got two passenger trains of which I have trust in. And that is this one here, my first, uh, this is my reverse livery Pullman. And as you can see him or her speeding around. And just coming up the other helix is my 125 unit. So hopefully they should pass shortly. And I know I shouldn't speak too soon, but I haven't heard any horrible raunchy derailing noises. Although I do have in my hand a cutout switch that will kill the layout. So there's my Pullman going down into Helix 1. And there's the 125 unit with its full rake of coaches coming off. And whilst I don't have the confidence to leave these trains running in the railway room on their own, <laughs> I could I dread to think of the things could possibly go wrong with that idea. But it's now a case really of putting my trains together and building confidence in them so that any derailing issues that do occur I can sort out. So there we go over my newly built little flyover and I must admit all seems well. But you, sh you shouldn't really speak too soon. Hell, that's a long train. Now this time those trains should hopefully meet somewhere around the top of this helix. Well, at long last, that takes us through now into the next phase of Chadwick. Both helixes appear to work reasonably well and the whole circuit works. So where do we go from here? Well, now it's a bit of intensive testing. I'm quite content that that Pullman set and the 125 set worked perfectly well. But now it's a case of taking each train in turn, putting it through its paces, finding its ideal speed, both to cope with the helix and the track and also in a realistic way so we need to look at that and then of course the build goes on with a TMD and a fuel yard in this area and of course the branch line station over top of the other helix and not forgetting a freight liner yard which comes around the top um, in front of this area and also another reverse loop on the top of helix 2 so there's lots more building to be done but for a while we'll be just playing trains Anyway, so there we go. Right, just to round up then, all was well with this. Um, great leap forward and time to thank people. And I must thank my patrons who make it all possible. In these challenging economic times, it's their support that makes it uh, viable. And if you'd like to become a patron or donate to the channel, then there's the patron button and there's a PayPal link down below. And there's the subscriber button. Remember that subscribing is free. And there's a video here and here, and I'll see you in two weeks time. Thanks a lot, take care, bye-bye.